The giraffe looked out of her window at me and said, "How do you do? What's your name?" Billy, I told her. Well, Billy, she said, we need your help, and we need it fast. We must have some windows to clean. We've spent every penny we had on buying this house, and we've got to earn some more money quickly. The pelly is starving. The monkey is famished, and I am perishing with hunger. The pelly needs fish. The monkey needs nuts, and I am even more difficult to feed. I am a generous giraffe, and a generous giraffe, and a. Grainacus giraffe cannot eat anything except the pink and purple flower of the tinkle tinkle tree, but those, as I am sure you know, are hard to find and expensive to buy. The pelican cried out, "Right now, I'm so hungry, I could eat a stale sardine." Has anyone seen a stale sardine or a bucket of rotten cod? I'd eat a lot. Upon the spot, I'm such a hungry bot. Every time the pelican spoke, the beak I was standing in jiggled madly up and down, and the more excited he got, the more it jiggled. The monkey said, <coughs> "What Pelly is really crazy about is salmon." Yes, yes, cried the pelican. Salmon, oh glorious salmon! I dreamed about it all day long, but I never get any. And I dreamed about walnuts," shouted the monkey. "A walnut fresh from the tree is grumptious, galumptious, so flavory, savory, so sweet to eat that it makes me all wobbly, all wobbly just thinking about it." At exactly that moment, a huge white Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce. <coughs> <coughs> pulled up right below us, and a chauffeur in a blue and a gold uniform get out. He was carrying an envelope in one gloved hand. Good heavens! I whispered, "That's the Duke of Hemsphere's car." Who's he? Asked the giraffe. He's the richest man in England. I said. The chauffeur knocked on the door of the grubber. <coughs> He looked up and saw us. He saw the giraffe, the pelly, the monkey, and me, and all staring down at him from above. But not a muscle moved in his face. Not an eyebrow was raised. The chauffeurs, a very rich man, are never surprised by anything they see. The chauffeur said, "His Grace, the Duke of Hemsphere, has instructed me to deliver this envelope to the Ladderless Window Cleaning Company." That is us. Cried the monkey. The giraffe said, "Be so good as to open the envelope and read us the letter." The chauffeur unfolded the letter and began to read. <coughs> Dear sirs, I saw your notice as I drove by this morning. I have been looking for a decent window cleaner for the last fifty years, but I have not found one yet. My house has six hundred and seventy-seven windows in it, not counting the greenhouse, and all of them are filthy. Kindly come to see me as soon as possible. Yours truly, Hemsphere. That edit, the chauffeur, in a voice filled with awe and respect, was written by His Grace, the Duke of Hemsphere, in his own hand. The giraffe said to the chauffeur, "Please tell His Grace, the Duke, that we will be with him as soon as possible." The chauffeur touched his cap and got back into the Rolls Royce. Whoopee! Shouted the monkey. Fantastic! Cried the pelican. That must be the best window cleaning job in the world. Billy said the giraffe. What is the house called, and how do we get there? It is called Hemsphere's house. I said. It's just over the hill. I'll show you the way. We're off! Cried the monkey. We're off to see the duke. The giraffe stood, st stooped. Low and went out through the tall door. The monkey jumped off the window sill on the giraffe's back. The pelican, with me in his beak hanging on for dear life, flew across and perched on the very top of the giraffe's head. And away we went. It wasn't long before we came to the 
gates of Hemsphere House, and as the giraffe moved slowly up the great white driveway, we all began to feel just a little bit nervous. What's he like, this duke? The giraffe asked me. I don't know, I said, but he's a very, very famous person and very rich. People say he has 25 gardeners just to look after his flower beds. Soon, the huge house itself came into view. And what a house it was! It was like a palace. It was bigger than a palace. Just look at those windows, cried the monkeys. They'll keep us going forever. Then suddenly we heard a man's voice a short distance away to the right. I want those big black ones at the top of the tree, the man was shouting. Get me those great big black ones! We peered round the bushes and saw an oldish man with an immense white mustache standing under a tall cherry tree and pointing his walking stick in the air. There was a ladder against the tree and another man who was probably a gardener was up the ladder. Get me those great big black juicy ones right at the very top! The old man was shouting. I can't reach them, your grace, the gardener called back. The ladder isn't long enough. Damnation, shouted the duke. I was so looking forward to eating those big ones. Here we go, the pelican whispered to me, and with a swish and a swoop he called me up to the very top of the cherry tree, and there he perched. Pick them, Billy, he whispered. Pick them quickly and put them in my beak. The gardeners got such a shock, he fell off the ladder down below us. <laughs> the duke was shouting, My gun! Get me my gun! Some damnable monsters of the burr is stealing my best cherries. Be off with you, sir. Go away. Those are my cherries, not yours. I'll have you shot for this time, sir. Where's my gun? Hurry, Billy, whispered the pelican. Hurry, hurry, hurry. My gun. The duke was shouting to the gardeners. Get me my gun, you idiot. I'll have that thieving bird for breakfast. You see if I don't. I'll pick them all, I whispered to the pelican. At once the pelly flew down the landed right beside the furious figure of the Duke of Hemsphere, who was prancing about the waving his stick in the air. Your cherries, your grace, I said as I leaned over the edge of the pelican's beak and offered a handful to the duke. The duke was staggered. He reeled back and his eyes popped nearly out of their stock sockets. Grace God, he gasped. Good Lord, what's this? Who are you? And now the giraffe with the monkey dancing above on her back emerged suddenly from the bushes. The duke stared at them. He looked at though he was about to have a fit. Where are who are these creatures? he bellowed. Has the whole world gone completely dotty? We are the window cleaners, sang out the monkey. We will polish your glass till it's shining like brass and it's Sparkle like sun on the sea, we will work for your grace, till we're, till we're blue in the face, the giraffe and the pally and me. You ask us to come and see you, the giraffe said. <laughs>